Hi, I'm Scott, and today we're going to be looking at a brand new motorcycle camera system from Innov, 4K capable K5. We're going to unbox it, install it, get some test footage, coming up next on Goldwing Docs. <laughs> Welcome back to Goldwing Docs. Now you might notice this video is actually being shot in 4K. I don't usually shoot in 4K because who needs to? And it takes a lot more time and space on my computer to actually process a 4K video. However, we've got a brand new camera from Innov and this is a 4K camera system for your motorcycle. So in order to show you the glorious 4K footage that's coming out of this thing, I'm shooting this entire video in 4K. So if you have a 4K monitor in your computer or if your phone has 4K capability, you maybe you want to click that little gear down below and make sure that you're actually seeing this in 4K so you're seeing the actual resolution that this camera can produce. So, Innov cameras. I've actually had a long history with Innov cameras and their motorcycle camera systems, starting with the C3. Now, the C3 had a single little bullet camera that mounted in the front of the motorcycle, and then it had a separate DVR into which you plug a SD card, and it would record HD footage on that camera into the DVR. The DVR you would store inside the bike somewhere where it was safe and weatherproof, and the camera itself was weatherproof on the outside so you can mount it anywhere on the motorcycle. It has a separate microphone that you could put you could clip it to your collar or you could put it up inside your helmet. You could actually some people actually took that camera and mounted it on their helmet as well. So they used it as kind of a helmet cam and you could turn around and talk and wherever you pointed your helmet is what you were taking video of. It had a few nice features that you didn't see on other cameras specific for motorcycles in that it would turn itself on and off when you shut off the bike it would gracefully shut down so you didn't lose data i replaced my c3 with a k2 the k2 is similar to the c3 but you got two cameras one for the front one for the back and they were both full hd cameras 1920 by 1080. it too had a separate dvr module that you would store inside the bike it was a little bit different in that the microphone itself was built into the DVR. So wherever that DVR was stored is where it picked up the sound. That was a little bit troublesome for me because I stored the DVR inside the pocket in my fairing. So instead of getting outside sounds or noise of the engine or whatever, it was kind of muffled. So that was something, a little bit of downgrade, but it had GPS. It had a little GPS receiver that you could mount. I put mine on, on the dashboard of my, of my GL1500, and that meant it knew exactly where you were and how fast you were going. And it, you could put that right on the video. So if you saw something in your video later on, you're like, wow, that's really beautiful. Where was that? Well, you can look right on the video and trace back and see exactly where you were. They also had data files that would work with their cell phone application where you could track and see exactly where the video was taken. One other new feature for that is that it had parking recording. It had an impact sensor. So if you were involved in a crash, the impact sensor sensed that and it would record and keep that video forever. Otherwise, it would just loop over and re-record over old, the oldest videos on the card. That motion sensor was also active when the bike was parked. So if someone hit your bike, it could actually start recording and you could have some kind of video evidence of who hit your bike and did the damage to it. The K5, the brand new Inno K5 has two cameras and it's a little bit different in that the front camera actually houses the DVR. There's no separate DVR module this time. So the DVR has been miniaturized such that the camera and DVR all fit into one piece, which is kind of nice because there's one less thing to find a place for on your bike, a lot less wires to run. It also has an HD camera that you put on the back, just a little bullet camera, just like the K2. Uh, however, the front camera on the K5 is a 4K camera. So you get four times the resolution that you do on the full HD camera. The rear camera is still a bullet camera. It is still an HD camera. It will record both cameras at the same time, just like the K2. It has a G GPS module, just like the K2. It has a nice little remote control, which is nice. It has status and a button, so you can tell, yes, it's recording or not, not 
No, it's not recording. It tells you if you have a GPS signal. It also tells you if it's connected to Wi-Fi for your phone. And speaking of Wi-Fi, it now supports two different Wi-Fi bands, including the five gigahertz band. So when you're transferring movies or video data off the camera onto your phone via Wi-Fi, it's much, much faster than the older devices. The front camera and rear camera are both 120 degree covered. So you have fairly wide coverage around. So there's a little bit of bl a blind spot on either side, directly either side of you. But for the most part, you're going to be seeing all the way around the bike. It too has a G sensor, so when you it senses impact, it, it records a video that does not get deleted. It can also do the same thing with a parking monitor. The camera itself is IP67 rated. You could put that thing and hang it down inside a lake and it will still operate. It's completely waterproof. The K2 had a little bit of a problem with heat in terms of the DVR. The DVR would get extremely hot. Some people in hotter environments had real problems with that because it would overheat and sometimes would shut down. No such problems with this one. This one is rated from minus 30 degrees Celsius all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius, which is minus 20 Fahrenheit to I think 150, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So it will work in wide range of temperatures. Most GPS systems, including the one on the K2, update once per second. So you'll, you'll see it gets a fix every second. It measures the distance between those fixes and it knows how long it has between those fixes. And by using those, it can then figure out the direction you're traveling and the speed you're traveling. But you're left at the resolution of a one second update. So, so quick changes in direction or speed or braking sometimes might not be caught by the GPS system right away. This one has a five hertz update cycle. So five times a second, it's getting a fresh update of the current position from the GPS system. And that means the direction and speed is far more accurate and a much higher resolution. Lastly, my big complaint, they've come back to the external microphone. It has a microphone on a wire. You plug the wire in, you can move the microphone anywhere you want in the bike. You could clip it on your collar so you could talk on the video if you want. So that's, that's a huge upgrade for this one. So let's open the box, see what's inside. All right, I know unboxing videos, the talking hands unboxing type videos are kind of ridiculous, but people seem to really like them. So we'll do an unboxing video. So here it is, here's the box. It has a nice pretty, pretty picture of the motorcycle on the back and kind words and shows you, I guess that you can see around the motorcycle. And then it has, hey, look, it has a camera, a cell phone app. And so, oh, and by the way, I've linked to the videos for the C3 and the K2 from when I did the original reviews from those. And I have sample videos and, and review videos from those in the description here. So let's have a look at the new, brand new K5. Now, like a lot of boxes that you get nowadays, it has these really fancy magnets. You can see the magnets in there. Ooh, ah, okay, nice picture. So this is all about the, the experience, of, you know, the, the first opening experience. So let's, and I deliberately did not open this up before I got it. So if there's something wrong with it, we're about to find out now. Okay, so there's some nice thing about you know, okay, and so here's the unit itself, and that's kind of how we got it presented. It's got this little piece of foam, so that's protecting it quite well. So let's push all this stuff out of the foam. All right, so here is our remote control. There's the camera itself. There's the GPS receiver and the rear camera. So let's pull this out here. And then we've got instructions. Wow, uh, the instructions are I'm really impressed. The The instructions of the previous NOs were, were good, but not great. These are really nice. And, you know, showing all the different connections. Uh, the connections they use are obviously watertight. And look, they talk about the app operation and all the specifications. This is a nice set of uh, instructions. And I notice here that they you can download the, the apps for it right there. Um, I should note that the older version that had the separate DVR, all the wires from the cameras and the mic and everything went to the DVR. Well, this one, the DVR is in the camera, so all the wires from around the bike end up actually going to the camera at the front of the bike. We'll see how that works out for us. Then what do we have here? Uh, talking about the, the memory card, it says it works up to 
512 gigabytes, which is nice. Inno sent along a 256 gigabyte card, so that's that's great. We'll put that in. Uh, let's see here. If the parking mode has been enabled with the app on your phone, the K5 will provide around-the-clock protection when you're away and even when the engine is not running. The smart power supply module triggers parking mode automatically and it will wake up and start recording when an impact or motion is detected by the built-in G sensor. So obviously to do that, uh, you have to have it hooked up to the battery at all times. It actually has a power supply that will switch that for you. And then it has the instructions on how to actually mount the remote control, the cameras and interesting. Okay. And then we have a sticker. So you can stick that on your bike and post a video of your tour on our Facebook and we'll review and submit gifts to the favorite ones. Hey, that's nice. Nice idea. Okay, so let's move all this aside and we'll get into the boxes themselves. Now to look at that. Okay, the DC converter, before we get to the cameras, let's talk about the DC converter. This is a five volt converter that Inno supplies and it ha they have this with all their bikes, all their cameras rather. So what it does is it puts out two amps of power at, at five volts regulated, but it does a little bit more than that. I mean, first off, it does come with some nice connections. So you got a fused connection. You've got uh, these spade lug terminals that you can put onto an accessory bar or even your battery if you like. The yellow goes to switched power. So this is your battery power. Red is going directly to your full on 12 volt all the time. Black is obviously ground. Yellow is switched. So this is powered all the time. And then when you turn on the bike, you get power on the yellow, which instructs the camera to power up and start recording. But in order to have that parking mode enabled, you have to have these connected all the time. And then it will intelligently turn on when it needs to. And then we've got this, this connector that then connects it to the DVR itself. That's nice and, and it, it does work very well. Let's have a look at the cameras. This is what we're here to see. Okay, so here's the front camera and it has, what is that? I have no idea. We'll look at that in a minute. So then the camera itself is, uh, it's aluminum. It's a very solid aluminum. Now, if we look on this side, this is where the memory card goes in. And obviously because this is the DVR, it has to be sealed against the weather. So they have this plate on here with these screws. Now, Innov did tell me, they wrote and told me that they have replaced these screws with thumb screws that you can actually operate without using a screwdriver. So if you're on the road and you need to switch out a memory card, you don't have to bring a screwdriver along with you like I'm doing right here. You can do it just with thumb screws. They did actually offer me to replace this one with one with the thumb screws. I said, no, that won't be necessary. Just go ahead and send me that. Uh, just send me a picture of it, which I'll link into here, right? So you can see those thumb screws. So here we've got the memory card that they sent. So let's open that up. And as usually comes with a memory card. It actually comes with a reader adapter, so SD reader adapter. So you could plug that into your computer and read the card directly. And typically that's how I do it because these things create massive files, very huge files that take a long time to uh, transfer sometimes over Wi-Fi. So I will generally, when I'm pulling video off this, I will take the little tiny micro SD card and I will stick it into this SD card adapter, just like this here. And then put that in the computer and read it directly because that's that's the fastest way of doing it. So we're going to take this SD card and we will stick it in the SD card slot. Push it until it clicks in. It's, it's to move it in and out. You push it and it comes out. So you push it again, clicks in, now it's, it's inserted. And it does have this gasket around here. You can see there's like silicone or something like that. So we'll put this back in place and screw it. Okay, so the memory card's installed. You can see where the mount goes. It looks like a standard threaded camera mount on there. That's interesting. That's something different. And then we have the strain reliefs for all the cables coming out the back. The outside has the, the logo and a little bit of a, a rough kind of a 
embossing in there. That's kind of nice. And then of course the lens protector, we'll leave that lens protector on there for now. So it looks like it's a, a machined aluminum with uh, two pieces of flat piece screwed on the bottom or, or the top rather and the bottom because it, it goes in like this. And then gaskets in between and it's all screwed together with machine screws. So it looks like a fairly sturdy and it's, it's substantial. It's not lightweight um, in terms of uh, build quality. And then we have all the different adapters. And if you will look at the, the connectors, they are all different. So it is impossible for you to hook this up wrong because all the, the connectors only go with where they're supposed to go. Number six, Wi-Fi antenna. Aha! Okay, so that makes perfect sense. This has Wi-Fi. However, this is a solid piece of aluminum. Where's the Wi-Fi antenna? If they put an antenna internally in this thing, it wouldn't work because there's, it's gonna be blocked by the, the metal casing. So the Wi-Fi antenna is external to the unit. So once this is mounted, we're gonna have to find a place to put this. And I suppose we could just stick it somewhere with the adhesive. So I can see right away, there's gonna be a little bit of an issue mounting this on my bike the way I have it because I have mine mounted with adhesive. And what I do is I mount it with adhesive to the underside of my fairing, and then the camera goes into the mount. This, uh, I suspect I might be able to do that, but it is kind of heavy and I'm thinking, unless I have a large area of adhesive and I use a 3M VHB adhesive, it's a very high bond adhesive. It's meant for putting trim in cars and holding trim in place. So unless I have uh, a very large flat area without this raised bit that I can fasten the VHB to, I suspect I may be looking at a different way of mounting this in my bike. So we'll, we'll get to that. The rear camera comes with a fairly large length of cable. Obviously it has to go from the back of the bike to the front. Well, hopefully that's gonna reach that. I think that should just by looking at it, it looks to be about six feet or so. And of course it has a lens protector on the front as well. This camera looks slightly larger, I think, than the, the C3 or the, rather the K2. So we'll have a look and see. I might be able to use my existing mount on the rear. We'll have a look and see. A remote control we have. This lights up when it's actually recording. This lights up when it has a GPS fix, and this lights up when it's connected via Wi-Fi. I believe there are different functions we can do by pushing this button. Okay, I just quickly read the instructions to find out what we do with this remote. So if you're riding along and somebody cuts you off and you're annoyed about it, but you know you got another four hours of riding to go through and you don't want to lose that video because it might get overwritten. So what you do is you just push that button and it marks that video as, hey, save this video, don't overwrite it. So anytime you, have, you see something and you're like, hey, I wanna, I wanna come back to that video later, just hit that button. That's kind of a nice feature actually, because how many times I've ride, ridden and seen something amazing, and then I, I know out of six hours of riding, I have six hours of video to try and search through and try to find that you know 30 second piece. This is actually a really nice feature. I'm gonna use that all the time. A second feature it has is if you push it twice, quickly like that, it takes a photograph and saves it as a photo image. So if somebody is, uh, say somebody just brake checked you or did something stupid, you, you want a picture of their license plate or something, there you go, there's your license plate picture. Uh, lastly, if you push and hold the button down for 10 seconds, it does a factory reset. And I suppose that's the factory reset function that you have on the K2, which has a button on the top, you can do the same thing. So lastly, microphone. Uh, it does have a wind cover on it, which is nice. You can probably take that off. Yes, you can. So this is just a standard condenser microphone. It does have a clip on it, so you could clip it onto your clothes, so you could narrate into the, uh, the thing as you, as you ride. You could obviously just undo that and take that piece off if you wanted. Um, I tend to not really want to narrate while I'm riding. I rather just hear the motorcycle, hear the road, and, and hear what's going on. The fact that it's got a wind cover on it, that's nice because it will uh, attenuate the noise from the wind. So I'll have to find a place for this to, to live inside my motorcycle. I suppose if you wanted to, you could really lean over and yell into it, but we'll see. Lastly, here's our GPS module. So we will find a place for this, probably take put in the same place my existing GPS module is right on the dashboard. 
Okay, the mounts. Let's have a look at the mounts. All right, so every time Inno sends one of these things, they send me one of uh, these card readers, and I'll just get my knife out here and have a look at this. So it looks like a t-shirt. It's got their name on it and everything, but what it actually is is an adapter that lets you read your SD card in a USB. So if you have, um, you don't, maybe your computer doesn't have one of these SD adapters that you can plug straight into it, but every computer has a USB port. So you can just take your little micro SD card, stick it in there, and then take this end, which is the USB, and just plug it into your computer, and now you can read the card over USB. Okay, so here we go. Here's, look at that. They gave us a little screwdriver and some O-rings, it looks like spare o-rings and a piece of that 3m vhb that i was talking about so that is likely going to be for the gps so we can because the gps has no other way of mounting it so they give us a piece of G vhb to mount the gps somewhere that's nice and they gave us a screwdriver so we can open the sd card i may just put that little screwdriver in my bike so that if i ever do need to open that we have that available Here's the rear mount. It looks to be very similar to the existing rear mount that I have. Hopefully I'll be able to use that existing one that I have. It is a piece of billet aluminum, machined aluminum, and the round ring. So that goes around this. You tighten it, it holds it and grips it in place. And then this has all kinds of screw holes and whatnot in it. You've got, um, cable stays with VHB on the back so you can route the cable and strap it down. We've got this piece of rubber here that actually goes on the inside. It's, it's sticky on one side, so it goes around the inside like that and adheres in place so that when you put the camera through, the silicone rubber grips the camera and it keeps it from moving and also um, prevents it from rotating. And I gotta say, getting these cameras in and rotated so that everything is level is probably the toughest part of this install. It usually takes me a couple days to get everything perfect. And then we have um, different types of mounts. We can, oh, look at that. that, is that metal? Yes, it is. Okay, so it actually felt like uh, carbon fiber or something for a moment. So this then can mount to here. And so they give you different options in terms of mounting choices. You can take one of these uh, Allen bolts and you can put it through here and then into this way or this way or whichever way you want it to get it to fit. And then you have this other bolt here or mach machine screw here. So if, if you have the mount up this way, you can put this through here and adjust it that way. And then you've got some silicone washers here so that if you need to push it out one way or another, you can. And then of course, a, a, a nut that goes on the backside to hold it in place. So it gives you lots of options in terms of mounting. Uh, this is how Inof has done it for quite some time. It's, it works, it's workable. I find that I much prefer using a combination of their mounts along with VHB adhesive to adhere it without actually drilling and, and mounting things physically in place. That may change with uh, the, the advent of this one because that front camera looks a, a little bit heavy to me for VHB. Let's have a look at the front mount. A little bit more hardware in here. We've got a couple different brackets, actually three different, four different brackets. And we got our universal uh, billet thing here and some machine screws and cable stays and so on. I have a feeling these cable stays may not be enough to handle all of these cables. So we may have to find a solution for that. Now, obviously we have this, which can mount to here. We could screw that in place on here. And then from there, maybe we could have this mounted in like that, and that would allow us to rotate. Okay, like I said, this is a, a universal mounting kit that they supply with all the different cameras. How it works for your bike may not be the same as how it works for my bike, and, and how I do it on my bike may not be the same way you do it on your bike. And I'm telling you right now, just by looking at this, I'm not entirely sure how I will mount it on my bike, but we're gonna find that out soon. Day two. All right, it's been a day since I started recording this video. The intention was I was just gonna come up here, pull off the old camera, 
show you installing the new camera on the bike and everything would be great and I'd have the video out and ready to go. That didn't happen. As you can see, my bike is torn apart. Uh, I, it's been a couple years since I put that camera on and I forgot just how much disassembly I had to do in order to actually pull a wiring through there. Um, I had to run wire from the battery uh, up into where the DVR was in the pocket here. I also had to wire, run a wire from the DVR back all the way to the camera at the back of the bike. And that meant I had to pull this side off and get this fairing open here, which meant uh, this had to come off, the top of the shelter had to come off, and when I pulled this out I found a broken tab, so then I had to fix the broken tab. So one thing leads to another, here we are. Um, obviously the, the windshield had to come off because I had to get to the GPS sensor which was mounted on the glare shield here and it actually went underneath this uh, uh, gasket here, so the windshield had to actually come off in order to do that, which meant this had to come off and the, and the, the uh, fascia on the front here and so lots of stuff has come apart other things that have happened the wire for the power supply for the camera was not quite long enough to reach from the camera all the way back to my battery so I actually ended up having to extend it I snipped it and then I, I, I spliced in about two feet of extra wire and I put it in this wiring loom here so that when I run it back in here it doesn't chafe and we don't have any uh, electrical shorts. Uh, um, this, this wiring loom is really good stuff. You can get it cheap at Harbor Freight. It's basically just a split plastic loom. It's hard plastic so you can uh, run wire through the middle of it. Just like that. And once it's in there, it's nice and protected, and if you have any kind of vibration or chafing, it doesn't wear through the insulation on the wire and cause a short and a fire or worse. Then we have the rear camera. Now I had a look at the rear camera, and I did an estimate. So I, I, the rear camera has to reach all the way from the back of the bike to the camera placed at the front underneath the fairing there, which is where the camera goes on this bike. So. I had a look and said, hmm, that wire is, uh, I'm not quite sure if that's going to be long enough. So what I did is, is I'll put the camera back here about where it is, kind of do an estimate run, run it up here along to the front, push it out down through here. And is it going to fit? Yep, it's going to fit, but it's pretty close. There's not a lot of uh, free play there. and. The others are going to be fine, I think. I do wish that the camera module, the DVR module itself, had longer pigtails, maybe by a foot or so, because I'm going to have this mounted down here just like this, and these wires are going to go up in there, which means all these connectors are going to have to be fastened up underneath in the fairing here, and I'm going to have to secure those somehow. I really wish that these were maybe a foot or two longer so that I could run them up the fairing here and then maybe inside this pocket and I could put all the connectors inside the pocket where they're easy to get at because uh, otherwise I'm going to be reaching down in here and trying to do these connectors. It's going to be a real hassle. And plus the, there's not the greatest amount of clearance down in here where the fairing is um, because you have handlebars and, and fork tubes that are moving around in there and you certainly don't want to bind up on those or cause any chafing on these wires every time you steer or when you go over a bump or anything of that sort. So that's kind of important that you route these properly and it would be a lot easier if these were longer so that I could route them up into the pocket and then just do them in the pocket. Now they are weatherproof. They've got each of these connectors they have a, a silicone gasket so I'm not worried about water getting those connections, but having the 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 uh, connectors actually hidden up inside this pocket would just add one more layer of protection against weather and, and uh, water intrusion. The last problem I've had is with the app. Now the app that you run on the cell phone that works with the camera, it connects over Wi-Fi to the camera and it allows you to change the settings, how it's going to record, it allows you to flip the image, it allows you to pull the recordings off the camera and so on. I've got the app installed and I tried this on three different phones and I get the same result every time in that the app will connect to the, to the camera. You can see the live video of the camera, so the camera is definitely functioning. 
uh, but I can't get to the files that it records. It, the app just locks up. And as well, I can't get to the settings section on the app, which is the most important thing because obviously if you can't get to the settings where you can't set up, you know, do I want it recording in this size? Do I want it to flip the image if I've mounted the camera upside down? Do I, you know, all the important stuff you have to set up for your individual installation are in that settings. And that's the only place you can do those settings is in the phone app and mine doesn't work. It just comes up with a blank page. And like I said, I've tried this on three different cell phones and I got the exact same thing on all three of them. So to their credit, I actually sent an email off to Innov late last night, about 10 o'clock last night after I discovered this problem. And they, are all, they were back and forth to me at 10, 10.30 at night trying to troubleshoot this. So I know they're working on it right now. With any luck, I'll have a solution before I finish having to edit this video. I may have to edit, uh, delay the release of the video to make sure that we have a working app so that I can actually show the functionality of the thing. In any case, that's not going to affect how we're installing the camera right now. So we'll go ahead and do the install, get that over with, and then we'll get it tested out on the road and see how it works and how it records. Now I thought of a couple different ways of actually mounting this camera. My old camera I had bonded with UHB adhesive here, right to the bottom of the fairing. Uh, this camera is significantly heavier, so I thought about ways of actually mounting it. It does have a, a threaded mount on the bottom here, so I thought maybe if I mounted a bracket to this fairing mount right here, using that screw, that I could perhaps have it similar to this here and maybe outwards a little bit. The problem with that is this wheel moves. When you hit a bump, this can actually move up. So I, the clearance, particularly if I'm turned or if, if the wheel is turned like this and you hit a bump, you can actually have the wheel impact the camera in this position. So that's probably not gonna work. Uh, I really don't want to have the camera much farther down than about here. So what I thought is that instead of using the brackets as I had originally thought, that I will apply UHB or VHB rather adhesive foam tape to this entire surface here. And that's a, that's a good probably four square inches. So that's going to be bonded there with uh, you know, 30 or 40 pounds of, of strength that's not going to go anywhere. And then I can just mount it directly to the bottom of the fairing. Now the fairing is flat here, but then it does curve up at the edge, the lip there. So we have to bond it to the flat area, which is going to bring it right to about there. So what I'm going to do is check to make sure that the camera has a clear field of view here, is not, being, not going to be picking up the fairing on the top there. And we may have to move it a little bit forward just to, to be sure. And then I'll just run the wires back in and see how that works. All right, a good as place as any to start is with the power wiring. So let's start with that. I'll uh, thread this through. I think I'm going to have the actual power adapter itself end up inside my pocket here. So then I will thread the power wire out of the pocket and route that back to the battery. So this pocket actually is open when you remove the actual pocket itself. The bottom part of it is open so you can actually thread wires through onto the inside of the fairing here. So there's three connectors. We have our ground, full-time power, and switched power. So let's actually move this behind this bracket here so it's a little more secure. That looks good. And we'll secure it in place with some wire ties. connect up our ground. So I have a ground bus in here. So there's our ground wire. I'll feed that through here and we will fasten that in place on the ground bus bar.
right there. Okay, so there's our ground. The switched power is this yellow wire. And I have an electrical connections power panel right here, which provides me switching, switched power, and it's separately fused. So we will install into this fuse terminal right here, which is where the old camera was actually connected as well. Now I do have a little bit of excess wire here and I don't want that just dangling around. So I'm going to loop that up and just secure it in place of the uh, wire tie. And lastly, we have the full-time battery connection. This is actually has its own fuse and we will be connecting that directly to the battery, which gives us full-time power to our camera. And I want to make sure that fuse remains accessible in case I ever need to change it. Now, anytime you're working with the battery, you want to make sure that anytime you're touching the positive terminal, that first the negative terminal is disconnected. And the reason for that is because when you're working on that positive terminal, if you were to accidentally touch the positive terminal and any piece of bodywork on the motorcycle, you've created a direct short and you can be badly burned or injured. So now that the negative terminal is disconnected, I could connect from the positive terminal directly to the ground on the bike and it, it would have no effect because there's obviously no connection to the negative terminal. So I will undo that. So this is the camera power. This is my battery tender. This is my auxiliary power plate, which has an auxiliary fuse there as well. And if you notice, the one thing that's in common with all these connectors is that they're fused right close to the battery. So anytime you're putting an accessory directly onto the battery, you want to make sure there's a fuse directly on that wire as close as possible to the battery. Because if the wire chafes or shorts, you want to make sure that it's the fuse that blows and not the wire that melts. So the closer it is to the battery, the, clo the shorter amount of wire there is that's actually unprotected, which means the less chance of it actually chafing and, and, and blowing and, and causing a fire. Okay, so now we've got that positive lead put on and we will put the negative terminal back on, which now repowers the bike. Incidentally, this is a Motobat AGM battery. I'll put a link to it in the description. It's, it's a fantastic battery. Uh, I replaced an old UASA AGM that had lasted for eight or nine years. As long as this is kept on a battery tender, which you really should do, this battery, I love this battery. It's, it's, been a, it's inexpensive and it's a great battery. So now we should be seeing that this is powered up and it definitely is. I see a blue light on the, uh, on the power supply. So the in of power supply is now active. So that's, that's our power wiring that's, that's complete. Next, let's move on to the rear camera. Now the rear camera mounts in its own little mount. We do have to make sure that we have the logo facing upwards for this camera or else it'll end up tilted. This is one of the hardest things to do with these cameras because uh, it's really what looks like it might be perfectly right side up. You go take a video and you realize everything is kind of cockeyed a little bit. So it takes a little bit doing. So here we have the new bracket they're using for this camera. The idea is now that we take this rubber silicone and we stick it to the inside of this mount, which keeps the camera from rotating. And that just provides a, a friction fit for the, the camera so that once it's in the mount, it doesn't actually rotate around. So you can see we'll put that in the mount and then we'll put the camera in the middle of that just like this. And that way the camera is prevented from rotating. And I'm going to try and get the camera as perfectly centered here as I can in this mount. Next, we then take this block here and we're going to fit it into place and screw it. And that will provide tension around the camera to hold it in place. 
So I want to try and position this and see where I want to actually have it. So I think I'm going to have to have this a little farther back on the camera. Right about there should do. And I think that will work right about like that. So I'm going to take these machine screws and use the provided Allen key to screw those into the bracket. So if we get an idea, once we tighten this in place, of just how upright it looks in there, I think it might be need to rotate just a little bit, which means I have to loosen these off in order to get it to rotate. One nice thing about this system is that once, compared to the old mount, is that once you've got it in there, you can actually loosen it off and alter the, the tilt and the rotation of the camera without demounting it from the bike. That's kind of a nice feature. So how am I actually going to mount this to the, the bike? Well, it's going to be VHB again. Uh, my old standby uh, VHB, which is very high bond. It's a 3M foam tape, double-sided foam tape. It's meant, it's actually intended to put automotive trim on cars. So, you know, your, your trim on the so outside of your door there. It's weatherproof. It's intended for exactly this purpose, for bonding stuff in automotive applications. So this is exactly how <clears throat> my old camera was actually put on here. So I know it works because that camera has been on here for years and never budged. Um, as with a lot of things, how it comes down to the installation and how well the installation works is down to preparation. So you really want there to be absolutely no grease of any kind on there. So in order to fix that, make sure that I use brake cleaner. I use my old standby brake cleaner for everything. So take some brake cleaner. I'm just going to wipe down this area here that I'm going to bond it to, and I'm going to wipe down the mount itself so that any oils from my fingers are gone. You can also use this adhesion promoter. Um, these are a, a chemical that you use to prep the, the area, and it's basically a little tiny fo foam spudge. It's, it's basically a little foam spudge impregnated with this noxious chemical that you wipe on there and then you let it dry. And then when you put the tape on there, it's kind of like contact cement. It, it, once it's on there, it's never coming off. Well, well, I, I don't say never, but I used this to bond the camera on the old camera that was on this bike. And last night it took me about half an hour to get the old camera off because the adhesive is on there so strongly. So I'm just gonna wipe that on there. And I'm going to wipe some of this on the top of this. And I'm actually going to put this back in this Ziploc bag because I'm hoping I'd be able to use the same sponge for the front camera. So we'll put that away for now. Now I have my VHB tape and it looks like it's about the right width there. So I will just cut a little piece of this and I'm going to bond it to the mount here on the top. Just like that. Just give some good pressure so that it's well bonded on there. And then peel off the backing. You want to make sure you don't touch the foam with your fingers. So now we've got one triad that's kind of like contact cement. So we want to make sure that the camera is lined up, pointing the right direction. It's not canted left or right. And I'm just eyeballing this so that looks about right. So let's go ahead and stick that in place. I'll give it some good pressure there. And that should do it. Now this tape does take a, a few hours to actually reach its full strength. So you don't want to try and start moving around while it's, it's on there. But uh, that that's definitely going to stay there. It's not going to move anywhere. So now we can deal with the wire routing. So for the wire routing, we're going to do very similar to the power routing. Now I've pulled this 
camera cable up underneath the trunk and you, you, you noticed before I actually have removed the uh, under trunk panel to give me access to all this. So now I've got the camera wire here and I'm going to run it up underneath the frame so that it doesn't actually come in contact with anything moving like suspension, the top end of that air shock there. So we've got that up and under. And I'll move it underneath this frame member, underneath the seat, because we don't want to pinch the wire between the seat and the frame. That would be bad. And again, we'll move it underneath this frame member for the same reason. We don't want to pinch it between the frame and the seat. This is going to be, I think, fairly tight when it comes to the length of this cable. I have a suspicion. It's it's going to be close. Okay, so then we'll route this down again underneath this frame member. That will work just fine. And move it up and to the front. Yeah, this, we're gonna we're gonna be fine for the length on this. So now it's dangling out the front where the camera is going to be. So now we can fix this down with some wire ties. And as always, I like to fasten all of these wires down with wire ties, just prevent chafing, moving. You don't want wires moving around under here. You really want everything to be safely fastened down so that nothing is gonna start chafing. I actually have a really cool wire tie tool that you can get into a spot and pump it a couple times and it tightens it and cuts it off. So what I just did there, you wouldn't have to do. You could do it with a, put a tool in there. And I never seem to remember to get it out when I'm doing this work, so I never actually get to use it. And while we're up here, let's run this power wire out of here as well. So we'll feed this down out of my little cubby. and down towards where the camera is going to be. Now obviously we're going to have uh, some excess there so we will uh, make sure to have those all secured with wire ties and this will obviously not be hanging out like that anymore. All right let's do the GPS antenna next. I don't know, I'm going to answer this before people ask me, what's this brown thing in here? Well, what that is, is a 3M mailer that is completely waterproof. It's a self-sealing mailer. They're unbelievably tough and it's bubble wrap. And the reason I have that there is because I have a whole set, uh, it's a filtering circuit. It's got a toroid choke and some um, capacitors and some diodes, a circuit that I built to filter my headlight modulator because when the headlight modulator modulates the, the LED headlights, it induces spikes on the circuitry, which then you can pick up in the audio of the radio, which is annoying. So I built this filter circuit for the headlights and because I was at times getting a little bit of water intrusion in there, I just wrapped it in this completely waterproof uh, envelope and sealed it shut so it's now completely waterproof. So that's what that is there. Okay, so the GPS antenna I'm gonna put right here on my glare shield. And I have a hole here cut that I actually drilled for the previous antenna, which is just gonna be a little bit too small for this one. So let's just enlarge it just a touch. And this just fits down into the inside of the fairing here so I can get to it by taking out this headlight or the uh, turn signal here. So I can pull it from there and then from there I can get into that pocket. From the pocket I can get down to the front where the camera's gonna go. So once again, we're gonna use VHB here. I'm not gonna bother using a, a adhesion promoter on this one because it's not that critical. It's, it's sitting on top, it's not gonna move anywhere. Um, you know, I've actually sent a, some VHB tape actually already sized for this. 
And where did I put it? I don't see it. I think it's downstairs, but you know what? I've got some right here. I'll just use this. I'll just stick that onto the GPS antenna there. We'll peel off the backing. Again, the hardest part of this process. And then position the antenna. And I'm gonna get it as far up away from the window as possible. And place it just like that. Perfect. Then we will feed the antenna wire down into the pocket. And then from the pocket, we will feed it down to where the camera is going to go. Once again, we've got lots of spare wire in here. We're going to have to wrap all this up inside the pocket. As you can see, as we're working, getting along here, I, my hands are getting more and more shredded. It's uh, something you just have to deal with when you're working on these bikes. Okay, next is the little push button and status display. Now, Inov has the, the mounts so that you can actually connect this onto your handlebar so you could have it up there. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna mount it maybe right about here on my dash, which I know I probably end up going to regret because it has lights on that flash and then when I'm riding at night, I'm gonna have continuous flashing light in my face, but. We'll uh, deal with that later if this, the situation becomes unbearable. So once again, some brake cleaner to clean off any grease and dirt. And we'll do the same to the back of the unit. And then yet another piece of VHB. I tell you, I use this stuff for absolutely everything. There is so much on this bike that is fastened with VHB. If you see uh, my tire pressure monitor, my bike PC, um, I even had a GPS on the other side that was mounted there and all of those mounted with VHB and have been there for years that have never budged. So this stuff really does work. So here's my, my VHB. There we go. Okay, so I think it looks good right about there. So we'll stick it in place and that's where it will stay. So this one, how are we gonna get the wire down to where it's, cause this gets actually covered up. I do have a cutout here for this wire. So if I remove this vent, I might be able to get it through there. Okay, so then I will just feed this back through into here. And there's the, uh, this is actually um, Velcro holding that in place so I can take it off so it doesn't get stolen. Okay, so then I can put this vent back in. Refasten my tire pressure monitor. And then I can feed this wire down into here. Okay, so we'll feed this down here. And down to the camera. Now the last thing on the list is this microphone. Now, some people may want to clip this microphone to their clothing or something of that sort. I'm not going to do that. I'm just, I just, all I care about is hearing the bike. I want to hear the engine. So I'm going to feed this down from, again, from inside the cubby here and down to the camera. And then from here, I'm not entirely sure where it's going to go. I could mount it up inside this area, maybe. What if I were to clip it up inside the fairing up in here? Actually, I think that's what I may end up doing. Let me pull it back out of here 
I'm going to clip this microphone right up in here because it's protected from the wind and it will pick up outside noises. Actually, it's not protected from the wind because there's a vent right there in front of it. That's no good. Okay, so I've got it up inside the fairing there a little bit. It's protected from wind and weather and I will run this wire up inside of here so again that I can bundle everything properly. And to the camera. Okay, so that's our microphone. Now I am going to have to tie this wire up a bit. So I will get to that with wire ties. Let's hook up the camera so that we can get an idea of where we're going to position it and what we're going to see. So I've got all these cables here and each one connects to only one other connector. So you can't plug this in incorrectly because they won't actually mate. So these weatherproof connectors actually have uh, gaskets in them, little red gaskets. And the, and the kit comes with extra gaskets should you need them. This is a lot of wires to have to run out to the front of the bike where the camera is going. Um, it's probably one of the biggest downsides to this camera is that uh, there is no separate DVR and you have this thick bundle of wires that you have to deal with right up at the front. And that's you know kind of unwieldy to have to deal with this bundle right at the very front where the camera is going. Okay, so it's now connected. I'm going to turn the power on the bike on so the camera should power up. Okay, so now we'll open the Innov app, which should open, there we go, and we can go to the live camera view, which will show us exactly what the camera is seeing. So looking at the back, we can see that some of the top of the trunk is actually visible in that camera view. So we're probably going to go back there and, and actually tilt that down a little bit. As for the front, we'll put this up here and it looks like that will actually work quite well. If I have it right back there, it's not seeing the, it's seeing my light, it's seeing my camera, and it's not seeing the wheel or the fairing or anything of that sort. So I think that is actually going to work extremely well. So I'm pleased with that. So I'm able, I'm going to be able to just VHB that right there. Uh, it will clear the suspension. It's not going to, I don't have to deal with any um, of the bracketry and it's going to have a perfect view looking forward without, uh, you know, wheels and, and fairing and, and everything showing in there. So that's, that's the, the live view there. Now, if you look, here's the problem I'm, I'm having that if I go to the documents where you're supposed to be able to see the video files, it never actually brings anything up. It just has a spinner, nothing. Oh, what do you know? Look at that. It's now working. That's odd because this was not working yesterday. Well, let's see if the settings are working now. And the settings are now working. This is extremely odd because last night I spent hours trying to get this to work. Okay, well then, we will be dealing with this later and talking about the settings and the files and whatnot. I have confirmed that the camera positions are going to work. I will go ahead and clean the bottom of the fairing with my trusty brake cleaner as well as the top of the camera itself. Next, we will get the leftover adhesion promoter that I used previously out of my sealed bag here. By the way, I will leave a link to the adhesion promoter and the VHB tape in the description below. I use this for everything, like I mentioned, so it's well worth the investment. And they say use gloves and don't get this on your skin, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, do as I say, not as I do. 
apparently this is fairly noxious stuff. I'm trying not to get it on my skin. Okay, so now we will let that dry while we get our VHB tape ready to go. Off camera, I just repositioned the, the height of the rear camera. So now you can see that there's no longer the trunk in view. So now we have a nice clear picture of what's behind us. So I think we'll probably get two strips on here. We got lots of pressure on here because I want it to fix really, really well. And the nice thing is this stuff, it wants to be a reasonably warm temperature when you affix it. Um, and the camera being on actually heats up a little bit. So it's nice and warm. It's gonna create a nice bond for this stuff to adhere to. And remember with that adhesion promoter on here, this is like contact cement. Once you get it on there, it's, it's not coming off. You, like I said, it took me a good half hour to scrape off the remnants of the old stuff from the old camera that was mounted on here. Okay, so now we've got our tape in place on the camera. The moment of truth is affixing the camera to the fairing. And we wanna make sure that it is facing exactly forwards. Now I'm gonna turn the wheel just so we know that everything is straight so we get a good look at it. And it's really tough because everything is compound curves up here, so it's tough trying to get it exactly facing right. And I've got my, my live view on here so that I can see that I'm not actually obscuring anything before I affix it in place. And I think that's gonna look good like that. So. And there's the sticky side, the business side of the VHB tape. So we'll get it in position. We'll check our, our view. Make sure we're facing forwards. Thing looking good. Like I said, we get one chance at this, so. Well, we, we could redo it, but it's a lot of work. All right, moment of truth. Make sure we have sufficient clearance on the wires as well. That's important. All right, here we go. One, two, three, and there it is. Okay. That camera is now on there and it's not going anywhere. All right, next, this little Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, it kind of is a really delicate little thing on a wire and I really don't like the way it's just kind of hanging there. So we're gonna affix that to the fairing with some VHB as well. So we don't want it dangling in the wind, it will fail. So once again, trusty brake cleaner on the antenna itself and the fairing. And seeing as I have some VHP or adhesion promoter, we'll just use it because why not? Although it's pretty much dried up now. It's pretty volatile. And we'll just slip a little piece of VHP and stick that in place. And that'll keep that from flopping around in the wind. And it is definitely not sticking to this uh, Wi-Fi antenna. I don't know what this is, it's some kind of silicone rubber. It is definitely not wanting to stick to that. Well, my other option is usually aluminum tape um, when I have adhesion problems, but that's not gonna work with this because that will obscure the Wi-Fi signal and kind of defeat the purpose of having it in the first place. Hmm, 
yeah, this is like a silicone or something. So we're going to have to find a different way of fastening that in place. I wonder if we could use this tape as it's not intended to be used. Well, oh, that's definitely held in place and it's not going to go anywhere. Well, we'll, we'll leave it like that for now. And if it, it doesn't work, then we'll come up with a different idea. Here's looking down in the fairing where we've got all these wires coming up. And you can see all the connectors down there as well. So we've got to get all these connectors and all these wires pulled up into this fairing so that they're not hanging and dangling and getting in the way of the suspension and the steering. So. So I think what I may end up doing is just zip tying these to the, the fairing uh, frame. And I think that's going to work. If I just zip tie all this to the inside of this fairing right here, that, that piece of frame there. But, all right, so let's have a look and see where we are. You can see the wire is now uh, all tied up in a nice tight bundle. I've got a little straggler there, but we'll tuck him in. And it's not being touched by the suspension. Lots of clearance, no rubbing. Everything's tied up neatly. And then over in the cubby here, all the excess wire I've just bundled together into one. We'll tuck that up right underneath there and we should be good to go. Up front, we've got the front camera show in here. Oh, and we need to take that lens protector off now that we've uh, installed the camera. And we'll do the same to the back because it has a protector on it as well. And it's definitely showing that we have good picture from both and no interference. I'm happy with that. So the next step is to button the bike it back up together, put it all back together and give it a test. All right, so we got the bike back together, as you saw. Uh, while I was putting it together, I uh, noticed the control panel lit up a couple times uh, as I was kind of knocking around and bashing around. So it was kind of nice to see that when you do give the bike a, a, you know, a bit of a knock, it actually starts recording. So it would say, hey, you know what? Something just hit me. Let me record and see what's going on. So that's, that's nice to see. So there's the, uh, the sensor or the, the, the control panel. If I give the fairing a good knock, you can see it lights up and is recording to see, hey, who just hit me? Let's get a picture of what just happened. So as we always do on our camera reviews, we take the bike out and do some footage both in bright daylight as well as nighttime. So next we'll take the bike out. It's a nice sunny day out, so we'll, we'll get some nice daylight footage. Later on tonight, we'll go out when it's nice and dark and see how the cameras perform in darker environments. Before we head out though, there's something really important we have to take care of. Have you subscribed to this channel yet? Go ahead and click that subscribe button down below and click on the little bell because then you get notified when we post a new video and it really helps us out. All right, let's have a look at the videos and images taken by this system. We'll start with some daytime videos. When I first started out, I came up next to another Goldwing rider who then just started chatting to me and I was absolutely surprised at how clear the conversation was that that microphone picked up, even though it was buried inside my fairing. I did pick up a lot of wind noise with the microphone position where it was. I'm gonna to have to rethink where it goes. Riding in a rural area, the front camera struggles with a lot of detail, but the image is very clear. There's no flare from the sun. The rear camera also struggles a bit with detail, primarily due to bit rate. 
Remember, this is also half the resolution. I have the bitrate set to the second highest bitrate setting, so the image might improve with a higher bitrate. In urban stop and go traffic, it's much easier to get a good picture. There's not as much moving. The more things moving, the more data it requires to record them, and you only have a limited amount of data. The rear camera for the same time as the previous video is similarly clear. However, once we start to move, you can see the detail starts to go away as that bit rate gets used up with more and more moving information. The highway is also very clear and usable, but again, there's limited detail with the bit rate selected. At nighttime, the shutter speed slows down, so everything gets a little bit of a smoother appearance. It has very good low light performance. The rear camera is also great with low light. Notice it picks up the glow from the nearby city. There is a little bit of flare and internal lens reflection around bright headlights. Street lights and headlights in an urban area also have some flare, but again, low light performance is excellent. Now let's have a look at some still frames extracted from the video clips. This is a picture taken with a closure rate of 120 miles per hour. The, the plate on this car is almost readable. It could be with several frames looked at. The rear camera is not too readable, but again, it could be with several frames if we extracted between them. Now we'll look at some still images taken by pressing the photo button on the remote control. The front camera image is very clear at highway speed. An image taken in a rural area is also very clear, a little bit of internal reflection from the sun. The rear camera is similarly excellent. At slower speeds in an urban setting, the front camera takes excellent pictures. As does the rear, and license plates are clearly readable. As expected, at a stop, the front and rear images are excellent, with no noise. A nighttime rural image shows motion blur from a slower shutter speed. Again, the rear camera just takes excellent pictures in almost pitch darkness. At night, the highway picture lets you see far ahead. However, the rear highway pictures suffer badly from internal lens reflections from other headlights. In the urban areas, it takes good pictures, but with some lens flare and reflection. And again, the rear camera suffers badly from flare and reflection from headlights. So let's have a look at the InOv app that operates the K5. Selecting the camera on the top left moves us into the live video feed screen, where we can see feeds from both cameras live. If we select the document option, we can then select from different folders, such as continuous video or snapshots or emergency video. So you can see we have both a front and a rear video. And if we click on one of these videos, it, then we have the option of actually playing the video or we can download it to the phone or we can delete it from the camera itself. 
Now, copying each of these files takes about 20 seconds per one minute file. I do wish we had the ability to select multiple files and have them copy all at once. Currently as it's set up, you have to select each file, select copy, wait for it to copy, then click OK, then select another file. And if you have a lot of files you want to download, that is going to just take forever. So being able to select multiple files and copy all of them in one batch is something I'm going to request. Looking at the settings page, we have all kinds of different settings on here. Uh, the top section is all set up for the Wi-Fi. We can just tell what frequency it's going to use, the password, uh, how long the Wi-Fi stays on when the camera turns on. The camera settings, there's a, a ton of different resolutions you can set up. You can set up different frame rates and different resolutions for the front and rear camera. So if you don't want the 4K video resolution because perhaps it uses a lot of data, in which case, why are you buying this camera in the first place? But the option is there. You can change uh, down to 2K, you can change frame rates, you can change... There's basically a, a number of different selections you can have for resolutions. It may change in the future with different firmwares. I know it's changed uh, at least once already. If you look at the website or in the manual, it shows all the current selections you can have. Bit rate, you can change the, the bit rate that's being used to record the video. The higher the bit rate, the less compression, the higher quality of the video. So if video quality is not as important to you as the amount of time you can store on a card, then you may want to set it to a lower bit rate. If you want the absolute best video possible, you may want to set that to a higher bit rate. You can set the front or rear camera also to show a mirrored image. For recording settings, it, by default it records one minute of video per file. So at the end of each minute, it stops that file and starts recording into a new file. That makes it so that you don't have to download massive files and search through them to find what it is you're looking for. The format, you can format in either TS format or MP4. Video compression mode, I recommend you want to leave it H.265. That's going to give you the best quality for the least amount of file size. Time-lapse video, if you uh, don't want to record live video and you want to record it only one frame every few seconds, you'll end up with a, a video where you're riding along and it looks like you're riding at a thousand miles per hour. It's good for if you're doing a, a long trip, say you're doing maybe a trip through Kansas and all you see is cornfields, you want to zip past that quickly, you can just turn time-lapse video on and, and the resulting video that gets recorded will only be maybe a couple minutes long instead of a couple hours long. Preview lens switching tells it which image is actually going to be shown in that live view. Currently we have front and rear. You can change just the rear and front, so the rear is the larger image and the front the smaller, or you can show just the front or just the rear. Audio, yes, do you want to record audio? If so, what's the level, the audio level that you want? Date and time, yes, you want to have the date and time stored in there. Continuing on the settings, we have a speed unit. You can switch from miles or kilometers. GPS watermark marks the GPS speed and location uh, on the image of the video being recorded. The GPS switch turns that GPS location functionality on and off. GPS hertz is what I mentioned early in the video where we can have it record the GPS position up to five times a second, or we can drop it down if need be. Video stamp, you could just put whatever word you want in there and it will get stamped onto the video. The storage shows here we have a 256 gigabyte card of which 238 gigabytes are usable remaining. I can format that card by clicking the format there. Card detection normal, I have no idea what that does, it's not mentioned in the manual. Advanced settings, we have the parking monitoring, which is the function where it will record a short video anytime it detects an impact. The G sensor allows you to alter the sensitivity of that impact detection, so you may need a harder impact for it to start recording. If you're somewhere where there's a lot of loud traffic or something setting it off all the time, you may want to put that up a bit. Gravity acceleration, I have no idea. ELS, again, no idea what those do. They're not mentioned in the manual. I suppose we need an updated manual that has those new features in there. Gravity acceleration, I, I suspect that's going to uh, be part of the parking monitoring. So if it detects that all of a sudden the bike is falling over without necessarily an impact, it may trigger that. That's my guess. ELS, anyone's guess. Light source frequency, 60 hertz. It, Defaults to 50. If you're somewhere where the electrical power is 60 hertz, for instance, North America, do you want to change that to 60 hertz? If you're in the UK or somewhere where it's 50 hertz, then you want to switch it to that. Basically, it 
will allow the shutter speed to synchronize so that you don't get uh, a stroboscopic effect when you're recording video in that is lit up by street lights that flicker at that specific frequency. Time calibration simply sets the time and date inside the camera to whatever it is receiving from the GPS currently. Cache cleanup, the camera uses a little bit of memory to do its, its work. You can clean that up every so often. If you just click that, it, it will clean it. All right, so there's our Innov K5 camera system. I hope you like what you saw. It was uh, not too bad of an install. Actually, it was a lot more work taking the bike apart and getting the old system out than it was putting the new system in. I was a little bit leery of the shorter wires on the, on the camera at the front at the first. And of course, I did have that issue with the app at the beginning, but both of those ended up being not an issue at all. The, the wires and the connectors were definitely long enough and the app magically started to work today. As yesterday, it wasn't, but uh, um, kudos to Inno for jumping on that problem right away. They didn't actually do anything to fix it, it just started working. So, but they were definitely very responsive with their support. So if you like what you saw here today, don't forget, hit subscribe, like, hit that little bell down below, then you get notified of every one of our videos. Thanks for watching. This is riveting, watching a cell phone power up like this. Fabulous content. Sit here and watch and wait while this cell phone turns on. I know you tuned in for this.